How do I ascend in Into the Deep? An endgame is a separate task performed near the end of a match where a robot can accrue additional points by doing a specialized task. In Into the Deep, the endgame is climbing a structure at the center of the field for additional points. Be sure to reference the competition manual for this year's season to see exactly what rules you need to follow for a legal ascent. The simplest endgame task in Into the Deep is parking. Your robot simply needs to be in your own observation zone near your human player by the end of the match. For a level 1 ascent, the robot simply needs to be touching the lower bar. That's all you have to do. This isn't possible to do without actuating some sort of mechanism or part of your robot, since the first rung is above the legal starting height for your robot. This can be anything from an arm swinging up to touch the bar, to a zip tie popping up after the match starts, as long as you drive such that the zip tie is touching the bar at the end of the match. For the next level, a level 2 ascent, the robot must be fully off the ground and supported by either or both rungs on the submersible. Do note that you also have to achieve level 1 while doing this, but that's pretty straightforward. There are a few other rules you have to follow, like not being inside the submersible when you start. Level 3 is the final ascent level. To achieve this level, your robot must be fully supported by the high rung and fully above the low rung. Keep in mind, for a level 3 ascent especially, that before you can even touch the high rung, you have to be fully supported by the low rung. Parking and ascent level 1 are the easiest endgame tasks, and I hope that most robots can achieve either of these two. Parking simply needs a drivetrain and enough time left at the end of the match to drive over there, and ascent level 1 simply needs any sort of mechanism or part of a mechanism that can extend even slightly above the maximum starting configuration. Level 2 is significantly more difficult than level 1 and will need a dedicated mechanism or at least thought put into another mechanism to make it work. Since many of the other tasks in this game require your robot to expand outside of its starting volume, a level 2 ascent is likely possible with a mechanism you're already planning on designing. A level 3 ascent is significantly harder than level 2 and may be one of the hardest challenges FTC teams have ever seen. The increased difficulty is because it will almost certainly require a dedicated mechanism and you'll have to deal with factors you're not usually used to contending with such as the center of gravity of your robot while it's swinging. While we've never seen anything like this in FTC, we have seen similar challenges in FRC, particularly 2013 and 2022. While there are some differences, it can still be very useful for teams to look at designs that were effective in those years to gain inspiration for their robots this year. The Robot Starter Robot can park, do a level one climb, or a level two climb. To achieve a park, obviously, you just drive the robot to the correct location. For a level one climb, the robot simply needs to raise its arm and be touching the lower bar. Note that you may want to be resting the arm on the bar as opposed to pushing up on it, since points are assessed three seconds after you have to stop controlling your robot. So you don't want the arm to be slightly below when they make the assessment. For a level two climb, the robot has this peg installed below the main arm. This can be used to hook on to the low rung and when the arm is lowered it raises the robot off the ground to achieve a level 2 ascent. Note that this is just a standoff bolted to an arm we were already planning on using. We did have an arm in mind because we knew we could probably do something like this. While practicing you may note it's slightly difficult to line your robot up here you can see we've added some red tape so the drivers can easily see the hook. We did have to experiment a bit with where this standoff had to be added along the arm so that the robot CG rolled it and it was in a stable configuration after it climbed. This is one of our solutions to a level 3 climb. As you can see, this robot is only capable of a level 3 climb. We didn't add any other mechanisms to this since this one 
takes up a lot of volume inside and outside of the robot. If you do want to integrate a mechanism like this, it's going to be up to you to figure out how to package something like this with the rest of your robot so you can score during the rest of the match. To start, we needed a single piece of the robot that was long enough to go from the base up to the first bar. This isn't possible in the starting configuration, so we needed to make this part able to move in and out of the robot so we would be legal to start, but also tall enough to reach the bar. You can see we've got a chain loop here with a sprocket to tension it and an idler sprocket at this end and a driven sprocket at this end. On the chain, we've got two hooks installed with chain attachment links, and these will be able to hook over the bar at different angles. In this state, we drive up to the rung and drive the chain such that this hook catches on the first rung. When it continues downward, this starts to lift the robot and at the same time, we lengthen it. Once it gets off the ground, ensure that this bar contacts the high rung from the inside. Then the second hook grabs onto the high bar and pulls the robot the rest of the way up. It can also collapse back down to make sure that we're fully above the second bar. So this mechanism requires two motors. One very high reduction motor here to actuate this entire assembly forward and backward. And another motor here we've chosen to put on a right angle gearbox to drive the chain itself up and down. This is just one way we've come up with addressing this challenge, and we don't even know if it will be able to package with a robot that can play the rest of the game. I'm sure you can take inspiration from this and the many other climbing robots out there to build your own much more effective climbing mechanisms. There are hundreds of solutions out there, and everyone is going to have something that's slightly different. Again, these are going to be some of the most complicated mechanisms you need to design this year and will likely require at least two motors to get a level three climb. This challenge is really hard to do, and if you think you can score more points with the samples and specimens, by all means, that's a perfectly valid strategy. You should weigh the point values associated with this task versus the point values associated with the other tasks and the time you'll be giving up from scoring there to complete this task. It's important to assess your team's bandwidth and if you can focus on multiple different mechanisms or if you really should focus on one mechanism and do it well. It took multiple engineers quite a while to figure out how to design a mechanism for this challenge, but I'm excited to see what you guys come up with at the competition. And that is how you ascend in Into the Deep.